Hey, Shalom, Most High in Christ, bless you. Got Captain Ben Zion here, IUIC, Nashville, Tennessee, and I got here with me. Officer Obadiah. All right, uh, we're going to do 15 minutes with the captains. We're going to go over Romans 8. All right, um, a lot of Christians try to use this to say that, that we don't have to keep the laws no more. Uh, we're going to tear that. Uh, we're going to tear that down right now. Read what you got. The Book of Romans, chapter 8 and verse 1. Uh -huh. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, uh -huh. who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. All right, so read it one more time, please. There is therefore now no condemnation. All right, to understand this scripture, you got to understand what condemnation means. So let's look and go into the dictionary, and we're going to see what condemnation means, okay? What does condemnation mean? The definition of condemn. Express complete disapproval of, typically in public. All right, so we're going to read condemn. All right, the root word to condemnation is condemn. So that is why we're reading the definition of condemn. What does the second definition of condemn mean? Sentence someone to a particular punishment. All right, so con condemn means to sentence someone to what? To a particular punishment. A particular what? Punishment to a punishment read Especially death especially what death. All right now. Let's go back to Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 There is therefore now no condemnation All right stop so there is now no condemnation Condemnation meaning there is no more sentencing to what to death. All right a punishment worthy of death All right now read it from the top again there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. To them which are in Christ Jesus. All right, that you means that which means that you believe on the Messiah. Okay, we we'll, uh, now go to him uh, for the perpetuation of our sins. Okay, keep reading. Who walk not after the flesh? Who walk not after the flesh? What is the flesh that we walk out the? Give me Galatians chapter five and verse nineteen. The book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 19. Read. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. All right, so here we're getting what it means to walk in the flesh. And Paul told the Galatians here, all right, so this is what it means to walk in the flesh. You are doing these things. Read. Which are these? Uh huh, which are these? Adultery. All right, committing adultery means that you are walking in your flesh. Read. Fornication. Fornication means that you are walking in the flesh. Uncleanness, uh huh, lasciviousness, uh huh, read idolatry, come on, witchcraft, uh huh, hatred, uh huh, variance, uh huh, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past. That they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All right. So now you understand what uh, what Paul was telling the Romans. Read it from the top again. Romans 8 and 1. The book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. All right. So it's no punishment to them that believe in the death and the resurrection of the Messiah. All right. Read who walk not after the flesh because he didn't walk after the flesh he didn't walk after adultery he didn't walk after lasciviousness he didn't walk after the things that uh paul expressed as the walking after the flesh in uh galatians chapter 5 verse 19 on down christ didn't walk after those things all right read but after the spirit but after the spirit okay what is the spirit give me john chapter 6 and verse 63 so he didn't walk out the flesh, but he walked after the spirit. What was the spirit he walked out of? The book of John, chapter 6 and verse 63. Mm -hmm. It is the spirit that quickened him. Mm -hmm. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words, all right, which was the Bible, okay, that is what he walked out of, the commandments of God. So therefore, he did not uh, walk after the flesh. I get uh, Romans eight and verse two keep reading the book of romans chapter eight and verse two uh -huh. for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus have made me free from the law of sin all right stop see they'll say now i believe in jesus see now i don't have to keep the law all right we are not under condemnation my brother 
Alright? Now understanding that condemnation means that you are not worthy to be put to death for those sins. But now you must believe in Christ Jesus. Alright? And the Messiah and the Anointed One. Okay? To get your forgiveness of sins. That's all it's saying. Read it again. Um, verse 2 again. For the law of the Spirit. Alright? For the law of the Spirit. Read. Of life in oh. Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Have made me free from the law of sin and death. All right, so it made us free from the law of sin and death. Okay, so a lot of Christians would like to say and believe that now they don't have to keep none of the laws of God no more. Okay, go to um, I think it's Second Corinthians three and six, right quick. Let's get what that means. Second Corinthians chapter three and verse six. Is that is that right? Let me look. Yep, let's read it. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6. Who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament. So we're talking about the New Covenant, the New Testament. All right, read. Not of the letter. Not of the letter, meaning the uh, the laws of, of, of Moses, meaning the, the laws of sacrifice, read. But of the Spirit. But of the Spirit, read. For the letter killeth. So, so the letter killeth, read. But the Spirit giveth life. All right. So the letter is talking about the Old Covenant. All right. Read it from the top again. Who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament. So we're talking about a new covenant. I mean, yeah, a new covenant. Read. Not of the letter. So the letter has to be the Old Covenant. Read. But of the Spirit. But of the Spirit. For the letter killeth. So the Old Covenant killeth. But the Spirit giveth life. Uh, but the Spirit giveth life. Okay, give me uh, Romans 8 and 2 again. The book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 2. So now you'll understand it. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. All right, meaning the new covenant, the new testament. Have made me free from the law of sin. All right, it has made us free from that letter. Okay, read. And death. All right, of uh, and death meaning the old covenant. Because it was certain laws that you could not uh get for get forgiveness of it was certain sins that you committed all right for example give me leviticus chapter uh 20 and 13 just to show the people uh, a lot of people better be glad that christ came and he died okay people always want to ask how do you how do we know that jesus christ existed because no one is getting put to death for this act right here anymore that's how you know that the law and the new covenant uh, is in effect that Christ is in effect read this the book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13 uh -huh. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman Okay, both of them have committed an abomination So both of these people have committed an abomination which means that now a punishment a condemnation must come read they shall surely be put to death. They must what? Sh they shall surely be put to death. See, they surely must be condemned. They must surely get uh, put to death. They must surely be worthy of the death of the punishment, okay, which is the condemnation, all right, that the old letter, which was the old covenant, brought forth, all right? So let's go back to Romans 8 and 2. So that was an example, okay, there's many examples in the Bible of sins that people committed that they had they must uh they couldn't live on this side of the earth they had to go underneath their spirit had to go back to the most high god if they committed such uh, uh strange acts and stuff like that all right so read it again the book of romans chapter 8 and verse 2 uh -huh. for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death so the law okay of the spirit in Christ Jesus, meaning the new covenant, have made me free from the law of sin and death. We just gave you an example of one of the laws of sin and death. He committed the sin, two men laid down with each other, and the condemnation was the death, meaning that they had to die. Now read Romans 8 and 1. The book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. There is therefore now. Now, see, there is therefore now, meaning this day and time right here, after Christ have died, read now no condemnation to now, them so it's no condemnation to them there's no punishment okay a death to them which are in christ jesus which are in christ jesus who believe in the covenant uh of the new covenant read who walk not after the flesh christ didn't walk after the flesh but but after the spirit he walked after the spirit okay keep reading for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus 
have made me free from the law of sin and death. All right, so believing on Christ Jesus, all right, being the mediator between us and the Most High God, believing that he died for our sins, believing that now that you can get forgiveness of those sins that you committed, all right, say, for example, if a homosexual or a lesbian, all right, if they, if they repented, guess what? We can't, um, we can't condemn them if they're not repentant, okay? But if they can repent and believe on Christ Jesus, they have a chance to still get the kingdom, okay? But if, if they don't believe, guess what? They're going to get put to death anyway, all right? So, but we can't do it, all right? Because back then, the, the scribes and Pharisees, they was, they were still putting uh, people to death for breaking the laws, okay? People were still making animal sacrifices, uh, bringing in animals, bringing in sheep, bringing in um, goats, bringing in cattle, bringing in all type of stuff to sacrifice to get forgiveness of sin. And Paul had to let them know here in Romans, uh, let the Romans, the Israelites scattered in Rome, that we're now, we're not under that no more, but we're under Christ Jesus to all that believe. And now you cannot get put to death, but you have a chance for eternal life anyway through Christ Jesus. All right, read what you got. Verse 3. Yes. The book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. All right, so what the laws of sacrifice can do, it was made them weak through the flesh, okay? God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. All right, so God uh, sent his son Christ to die, okay? And he looked just like us, all right? He had flesh just like us. Read. And for sin condemn sin in the flesh all right and he told them he condemned sin in uh, sin in the flesh read that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us uh -huh. who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit all right so now we have to walk after the spirit and not after the flesh because before we was walking after the flesh okay we was committing all type of sins and we'll get get animal get the flesh of animals and we was going to burn it to, for the forgiveness of sins now we get that through the blood of Jesus, all right? So, all right, let's go to Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. Is that it, Grace? All right, so a lot of Christians like to use this to say that we do not have to keep the laws no more because we are now under Christ Jesus, but they're not understanding what, exactly what it's talking about, all right? So, read what you got. The book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men. All right, so the grace of God that's going to bring us salvation, it appears to all men, read. Teaching us that, denying ungodliness. So this grace period, all right, is supposed to teach us to deny ungodliness, okay? Not accept it, but deny it. That's a grace period, read. And worldly lust. And worldly lust. The things of this world like Thanksgiving, like Christmas, like New Year's, Valentine's Day. You, the, the, the grace that the Most High God has put us under is supposed to teach us to, to deny those things. Okay, was that it? No, sir. All right. We should live soberly. That we're supposed to live soberly. Stop being drunk. All right. On philosophies and uh, other doctrines and stuff. That we're going to live soberly what? Righteously. And re live righteously meaning keeping the laws of God. Read and godly and we're supposed to live godly keeping the laws of god all right in this present world in this present world right here today all right give me romans 6 okay right quick let's go back to romans chapter 6 and verse 1 right quick the book of romans chapter 6 and verse 1 uh -huh. what shall we say then shall we continue in sin a lot of people don't know what sin is christians don't even know what sin is sin is the breaking of god's laws should we continue breaking god's laws read that grace may abound that we may be found under uh grace under jesus christ read god forbid that means no god forbid means no read how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein all right so we got to understand that grace doesn't give you the license to sin right quick give me Sirach, give me Sirach chapter 15. I think it's the last verse. Here we go. Sirach 15 and verse, and the last verse. I want to believe. Uh, yeah, read that. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiastes chapter 15 and verse 20. He have commanded no man to do wickedly. So he have commanded no man to do wickedly, read. 
Neither have he given any man license to sin. And neither have he given any man license to sin. All right. So with that, y'all hope y'all got some understanding on Romans chapter eight. All right. Verses one through what? We read four, one through four, yes, one through three. All right. So we hope y'all got some understanding. Don't let a Christian bust you across the head with that one. All right. That we're going to say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.